you actually look at the, the history of our domestic dogs, so compared to a, a carnivorous wolf, we've actually lived with domestic dogs for 20 to 40,000 years. They've only ever been fed what humans have fed them. Um, they haven't gone out to hunt. They haven't been wild animals. They've only eaten what humans have fed them. And humans were when when agriculture started 3000 years ago humans were primarily plant based so actually dogs were fed a primarily plant based diet and this is 3000 years ago and they've actually there is a published paper where they found some bones in are just outside a, uh, an are outside barcelona it's all in spanish you'd probably be able to read it beautifully silvia albuquerque wrote the the paper fascinating how they they did carbon dating on the bones of 38 dogs that were found in a big pit. They worked out that they lived 3,000 years ago. They then did carbon dating and found that their DNA was actually almost, from what they'd eaten, it was very similar to the herbivorous animals they were actually guarding. So it was a time when man had started, agriculture had started to grow grains, and millet was the main form of grain, which is what they would have fed the dogs for their energy. So dogs, the whole DNA... Of, of dogs has changed compared to a, a, a carnivorous wolf. So dogs actually need 50% of their diet to be carbohydrate, to get their energy from carbohydrate, whereas carnivorous wolves need only 1.5% of their diet to be starch or carbohydrate, and the rest comes from fat and from protein. And wolves actually live a very short life. Um, they actually only live about six or seven years, if that. Obviously, it's it's harsh. They're on tundra. They're but that's because this incredibly high protein diet is extremely detrimental to the kidneys. And so to actually convert our dogs into carnivorous wolves and feed them a diet that a carnivorous wolf eats, we're shortening their life expectancy considerably. Whereas if you actually feed them what they've adapted to. So if you actually look at even looking at, um, at dogs in India that live off the street that aren't owned, they actually live far longer than than dogs anywhere in the world because the food they scavenge has no meat in it because obviously meat is sacred in, in India and most of the Indians are, are vegetarian of the population. And and these dogs live a much longer life, even though it's, it's a hard life, they're on the street as well scavenging in, in bins. And and actually, they've done studies that when puppies are born, the mum actually teaches the puppy how to scavenge for the right types of food. I mean, forage, not scavenge. I mean, scavenge, I suppose, as well, but forage. So, so what we've got here is what's called adaptation. And obviously, dogs have adapted considerably to what we've eaten. So to turn a dog 100% plant-based does require you to get the levels completely right. It's actually easier to have a vegan dog or a plant-based dog on a commercial food it is possible absolutely to home cook and i i produced a supplement and i use omega-3 algae oil where where the, the actual fish the omegas come from where fish actually get their omegas from for people who want to home cook and and um, do it it's a huge commitment but pe there's a lot of people out there who are quite willing to do it and um and the changes in dogs that you're feeding the gut microbiome these beautiful, clean proteins, really, but then giving the right level of carbohydrates as well. 